time for some rules of circles. Let's uh, start playing with a tangent rule. Tangent, which is that line that touches a circle at one point on the circle, and only one point. A tangent is perpendicular to the radius, and also, therefore, it's perpendicular to a diameter. So we need to apply this. So um, we need to sometimes verify that things are tangent or use the idea that things are tangent. In this case, let's verify that something is tangent. Well, that would mean if it were tangent, it would be perpendicular, which would make that a right triangle, which means we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So now you got to decide, is 10 the radius or is 10 the diameter? You got to be careful of that. Sometimes we're talking one or the other. Let's just go with it being the diameter. So we have 10 squared plus 48 squared equals 52 squared. So that's 148 squared is 2304. And 52 squared is 2704. Add those together, 2404 is not equal, so therefore that would not be tangent if we have 10 as a diameter, 48 as a b, and 52 as a to d, because Pythagorean theorem is not working. All right, let's verify this one. So we have 5 as a radius. Here's our right angle, if it were to be tangent. And so then we have 12 as the other leg. So we have 5 squared plus 12 squared. So this has to be our hypotenuse now. Well, it can't be 8 because it's got to be longer than 12. You also got to see that it's 8 and 5. 8 is only going up to that point. So this side's actually 13. So 13 squared is 169, this is 144, this is 25, 169, yes it works. So that is a tangent because Pythagorean theorem is working. So Pythagorean theorem is working, which means it's a right triangle, which is perpendicular, which means it's tangent. All through that set. Uh, another one. So pause it. Try this one. 9 squared plus 15 squared equals 18 squared. 81. Uh, let's see. That's 15, 225. Uh, I know that's going to end in a 4. I'm not sure what it is right now. But 81 and 225 is, uh, what, 306? So that ends in a 6. That's going to end in a 4 because it's 18 times 18, which is, you know, 64. So, can't work. I just had to find out if it did work. I don't have to have the numbers that's showing it's 306 is 306 or 306 is not 304. But there's no way that that 6 and that 4 are going to equal. So, that's enough to show. So, it's not tangent. Well, well, can we figure out some sides? Can we figure out how far it is to RS? We'll come back to that one. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, now we're going to be told that it is tangent, and they want us to find the radius. So again, Pythagorean theorem has to be working. Um, so that makes R one leg, 14 the other leg, and the hypotenuse is that which is r and 7, r and 7. That whole thing has to be squared. That is news for you, that we're going to square this quantity that c is actually a combination of things. The hypotenuse is a combo of things. So r squared plus 196. you got to remember how to do this from algebra. r plus 7 quantity squared 
is r plus 7 times r plus 7, which some people remember is FOIL, just distributive property. r times r, r squared. r times 7, 7 r. 7 times r, 7 r. 7 times 7, 49. You're just distributing the r to both things and the 7 to both in the next one. Combine like terms. So now we got something to solve. Um, there's an r squared on both sides, so they will actually cancel each other. We want to get numbers on one side, letters on the other. So again, back to, back to some basic algebra. 47 equals 14r. R is 10 and a half. Let's do one more, like that. So it is tangent, so find r. So again, the leg, r squared, the other leg. Again, the legs make up the right triangle, make up the right angle. Um, 9 squared equals r plus 6 quantity squared. So I hope you've paused this and start and did it on your own as I run through it. So r squared is going to cancel, minus 36, da, 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 da. what's that, 45, number 12, r equals 36 and 9 twelfths and 9 twelfths is 75, r equals 3.75. So that's using tangents or perpendicular. Um, let's go back to that, that problem. Well, I know a tangent's perpendicular. So if RS is a tangent, we've got, you got to find the shape. So pause this and think about what shape you can get here that we can solve for RS. Two ways to actually look at it. One, I'm going to draw something parallel to there. That would make, if this is 30, this is 30, that's 5, that's 5. This is 5 because this is 5, it's a radius. And this is 5 because I said I drew a parallelogram. Um, this whole side over here is 15 because the radius of this circle is 15. So that makes this part 10. Well, I got 10, I got 30, and I've got something I don't know. And I got a right angle. Looks like a right triangle to me. Awesome. 10 squared plus x squared equals 30 squared. 100 plus x squared equals 900. Subtract 100, x squared equals 800. So x will equal the square root of 800. And if you had a calculator, you'd crunch it out. It's, uh, oh, what is it? Not 30. Square root of 800. Come on, who knows that? Nobody? Fine. It's 28-ish. It's actually 28.28. So we use the idea of tangent being perpendicular, and we broke this shape up. Now, you could have broken the shape up another way. You could actually come up with the same exact thing. Um, I could have made a rectangle. That was 5, 5, x, x rectangle because they're perpendicular. And I'd be left with a triangle that had 10 more and this side was 30 because 15 plus 10 plus 5. And that's the exact same that I'm going to find this x here for this side of the right triangle because again they're parallel and those two are the same. 